Hello, everybody. Monaco here. And Milks. We're talking about page eight and nine of our practice packet. Yep. Video number five. Today we're going to do, delve into alkenes and alkynes. They are unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have double or triple bonds between the carbon atoms. Even one double or triple bond. Just one is all it takes to make you unsaturated because now I'm basically wasting bonds between carbons that could be going to hydrogens. Well, they're not wasting, but they're just well, not connected that From way. hydrogens total, from that point of view, right? So let's get right into nomenclature of alkenes, much like last time. Yep. So the first step in any naming of a hydrocarbon is you tell us how many carbons are present on table P. There are one, two, three, four, five carbons present. So we use the prefix pent. Pent. Okay, we got to find the end or the root of the word, so we have to look and see what kind of bonds are present. We see a double bond between carbons, and we look at table Q to see, hmm, which series does that belong to? Alkenes, which tells us the end of the name is E. But wait, there's a little bit more. This double bond could have been anywhere in the chain, so we got to tell you where exactly it is. The number that we throw out in front here of the name pentene is going to tell us which two carbons the bond is between. So this carbon carbon double bond is between the third and fourth carbon. So you would think to say three pentene, but you would be slightly incorrect because this molecule can rotate in three dimensional space. Mr. Milk started numbering it from the left hand side, but the convention says you have to number your hydrocarbon chain so that the part of interest is got the lowest number possible. So for that reason, this carbon-carbon double bond is actually between the second and third carbon. So we'd say two pentene because he numbered from the correct direction this time. He's got the right name. And notice, no matter which way I number it from, I still have the same number of carbons. Absolutely. That's why the number always comes last for the name of where the functional group is. So let's move on. I'll do one with an alkyne type of right. hydrocarbon. Right, right, right. The, yeah, and the number actually comes before, but we do it last in the steps, mm -hmm. right? So same steps. How prefix prefix tells us how many carbons. We're going to look on table P for that. So as he numbers them up, he's Pent got again. five. Pent. Pent. And now we need to figure out the root tells us what kind of bond is present. So this is on table Q. Oops, it's not an ene. It's not an ene. A triple bond, if I look on the picture, I see a triple bond under the eines. Y-N-E. Y-N-E. One letter makes all the difference, guys. It's really, really crucial that we get the right one. And now, of course, the number in front tells us where that special bond is. And the way he has it drawn right now, it would be 2 pentine. And by convention, if I numbered it the other way, why don't you do it in red with the uh, right on top instead of below? If I did it from left or from right to left, it would be three pentine. And by convention, now we'll choose two because we choose the lower number. There it is. That's that is the game, guys. We just did it, and guess what? We're gonna do it a few more times, and you're going to practice. Word to your mothers. All right, here we go. So we're not going to throw our functional groups or our reference tables up because we're holding on to them in our hands, which is what you should be doing while you're doing your practice. F means two carbons because that's what table P tells us. Een means there's a double bond between the carbons. There's only one place to put it. So now the hard part is to saturate all the carbons with hydrogens now. The left-hand carbon has to have two more bonds, so we're going to slap two hydrogens on it. So it has a total of four. Total four carbon bonds. Around just that one carbon. Now the right-hand carbon's already got two bonds, so we're going to slap two more hydrogens on it, and it has a total of four now. The formula C2H4 follows the molecular formula for all alkenes from table Q. So if you're given just a molecular formula and asked, is this saturated or unsaturated? Go to table Q and get a clue to see if that matches the formula. Table Q to get a clue. I like Woo! All right. All right. Next one. Propene. Prop tells us there are three carbons in the backbone. So we'll connect them all by single bonds. 
and it actually doesn't matter if you put it on the first or the second carbon, because if we flip that in outer space, three dimensions, it's the same carbon. It'll still be on the first. It's the same. But it's a convention to put it on the left side. You, you don't normally have to do the numbers until you get into four or five carbon long chains. True. So now he's got to saturate it up with the remaining bonds must be hydrogen. First carbon gets two more. Second carbon already has three bonds, so he can slip one more hydrogen on it. Doesn't matter if it's on top or bottom. And the last one, three hydrogens. We always go north, south, east, west, or 12, 3, 6, 9. C3, H6. There you go. And it is unsaturated. Can we double check now down here? Yeah, if you want to double check, what you do is you plug the 3 in for the number of carbons. 2 times 3 is 6. So this is C3, H6. So you should have gotten that formula, which is what you got, which is what you got from counting in the first place. Butene is where we have to introduce the numbers because but means four carbons. So we got a four carbon chain. And we have to decide where to put that double bond. I could put it between the first and second, or I could put it between the second and third. But the name tells me it's got to be between the first and second. Saturate them up, Mr. Milks. Two, one, two more, and three. Yep. Molecular formula is C4. I'm betting it's H8. How did I figure out that so quick without counting? Because I know the molecular formula, I double the carbons to get the hydrogens. It's unsaturated. <coughs> Four carbons in the structure. Looks to me like if I numbered either way, left or right, I still get the second carbon and the third carbon to have the double bond between it. So the double bond means that's an ene, butene. And now all we need to do is tell you the second carbon and the third carbon have the double bond. So C4H8 again. Wait a minute, Mr. Milks. Isn't that the same exact molecular formula as one butene? It is. And guess what? Now that's called an isomer. Isomer. Isotopes are to atoms as isomers are to molecules. Isomer, we'll have a whole video on it, is two molecules that have the same formula, but different structures, ways of connecting the atoms together. Right, and I went ahead and just recounted in blue, just to show you that if I recounted from right to left, it would still be 2-butene. So check your work to see if you put your functional group in the right spot. Monica's going to take care of alkynes now. Right, right, the structural formula again. If there's any double bond, it's automatically part of the alkenes. Right. So now we're going to do alkynes. First thing we're looking at is that F. F tells me how many carbons there are. There's only two. The ine tells me how many bonds there are. There is now three. And now to saturate it up, I, each one only needs one more hydrogen to get four bonds. Now I get C2H2. It is unsaturated. Notice how I'm underlining my end of the word with three lines. For me, that's a way to remember there's three bonds. Okay. Very good. All right. Prope. Prope is three carbons. Ine tells me that there's a triple bond somewhere. With three bond or with just three carbons, it doesn't matter. But by convention, we put it on the left. So I need one. The middle carbon needs none. He has four bonds already. He has a triple on one side and a single on the other. And so I can do my formula. I got C3, then I have H4. C3, H4. Interesting. Oh, and it's unsaturated. All right, next one, butyne. The but is where we're going to start. The but tells us how many carbons. There is four. The ine tells me there's a triple bond, and the number tells me where. So on the first carbon, there's a triple bond. Now let's go ahead and fill in our hydrogens. I've got one. I've got none. I've got two. And then I have three more north, south, east, west. Fill it in. C4. H how many? Five? Six. six. Got you six. I didn't even count. Why didn't I count? Because you used the convention down here. I double the carbons and, and then take two away. So C4, H is going to be two times four, which is, two. which is eight minus two is six, and you get C4, H6, and he's confirmed I am unsaturated. Beautiful. Now we got to name it. 
So let's count up our carbons. I see one, two, three, four. So now I'm a butte. Let me check and see if I can name it. If the, if it okay, we let can me do count that both ways to see if yeah, I yeah. get my number right. Okay, let's do that now. Looks like either way he counts the butte, being that it's in the middle, I'm going to get a two butte. Mm -hmm. The triple bond is on the two. Butte tells me four carbons. Ein tells me there's a triple bond. And now I can come up with my molecular formula of C4H6. And again, I did that without counting the atoms. You could from the picture, sure. just as useful, but I like to use the homologous series formula. Right. I figure when we were doing it, we're still so early on with this practice that we might, most of us might still be counting them. If you do enough of these, you stop counting them quick. But notice the pattern. Mm -hmm. The pattern in all day long, guys. Look at the bonds of carbons. If there is a triple bond present, it is an alkyne. Simple as that. All it takes is one. All it takes is one. Now, here's where Mr. and Monaco are going to be snakes. That's yep. right. I said it. I'm not going to answer any one of these questions for you. No. But you know what? Let me randomly answer one. Sure. Number four? Sure. How do you know if hydrocarbon is saturated or unsaturated? If it's an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. Or if it has a double or a triple bond. Right. If it's all single bonds, it is saturated. saturated. So the correct answer for number four is if it contains a double or triple bond. That's the only answer it's, you get. Well, that's, that's unsaturated. Yeah. How right. do you know if a carbon is saturated or unsaturated? You look and see at the double bonds. Yeah, if a there's a double bond. or a triple bond, it's automatically unsaturated. And if it's all single bonds, then it's, it's saturated. saturated. So that was a very long answer or a, a little bit short of space. line you got there so right. you got to come up with your own for right. that now you guys the rest gotta, of these ooh, dude if you watched your video and you weren't bumping or you just even if you wrote your notes down you should be able to figure go it out. back and look at them got it figure it out and so that's it guys now you need to be able to recognize and draw your alkenes alkynes Use table P to be able to tell me how many carbons. In the back one. Remember, we got to be careful how we number them as we go and to find gonna, the. That's going to tell us the number in front, mm -hmm. right? Uh, structural formula: alkenes, alkynes, alkanes are actually we can do alkanes now. They are in our toolbox, and specifically, double triple bonds are unsaturated. That's it. Sorry it took so long, but guys, it was. It really did. Only wait. twelve and a half minutes. Yeah, I mean, but, we've talked at more of an older, yeah, older ooh. stuff. So we're really picking up the pace for but you guys. guys this was this was some serious business, and yeah. so we had to do do it justice. You're going to be doing this a bunch of practice. It's also, why the packet's so thick? Because there's so much practice. Once you get the hang of it, you'll see it works for every molecule. So <laughs>